G'day folks, I'm just looking at the back and uh, well, front of a working L LG television. Uh, big thanks to my subscriber uh, Braden. Uh, he was nice enough to send this all the way from Rockhampton in Queensland. A replacement board and another power supply. Um, it works fine. I haven't used the power supply, it's slightly different to this one. And to make things worse it actually slid off the top of the uh, thing I had it sitting on and cracked that bottom corner but I can fix that really easy so I haven't used it yet but I actually took this one out replaced one sus cap that blue um, Nippon Chemicons replacing a uh, dodgy Samwa cap the other ones came out really good they actually measure really good the Korean made Samwas measure really well from the ESR meter the um, Chinese made panels do not read so well at least the caps on them anyway there's there seems to be korean made sandwiches and chinese made sandwiches the china made ones just oh they're rubbish absolute rubbish i don't know if these are all china made or all korean made but the ones on this power supply came up fine apart from one on the 12 volt rail which was a bit low like it was a couple of hundred microfarads low so i replaced it with a really good um recovered Nippon Chemicon and that whole rail's actually uh, settled down a lot more. I was getting very slight ripple on it, now I don't. But that's on 12 volt. I think 5 volt feeds the uh, CPU on this, or the main image processor. Which by the way, as you can see, I've put a heatsink on it. Learn from that LG, which I actually I think LG have learned from it, because these boards are a hot item on eBay. Uh, everywhere. They're just hard to find because they all die. <laughs> uh, revision, firmware revision on this one's slightly newer. That one's slightly older, but it has a different chip on it as well. It's made by ST Semiconductors. This one's a Genesis chip. Same model, FLI10610H. Uh, the ST one's also the same model, but maybe that's the reason why it's still working today. I don't know. Maybe it's just a better chip. They're still all lead-free solder. They've all got the uh, lead-free solder um, indicator on them. It looks really dry and crispy, even though it's not actually cracked. I, I hate lead-free solder, especially on fine BGA joints and things like that. But that's what they've done. That's basically what they've got to do to get their ROHS certification. And yeah, sadly it means uh, failures. But that failure could have been avoided and I mean if I literally press on that chip like that while it's running I get weird things happening so that's one for the oven actually the one that has the uh, HDMI chip taken off I actually damaged a couple of traces doing it it's the first time I've desoldered a four-sided um, surface mount chip so I did pretty well considering I only lost two uh, two pads but I'm not going to bother with that one, but this one here, I'll throw this in the oven and just see what it does. If it melts the uh, RCA sockets and everything, I don't care. Trial and error. But that one there works. It works fine. It's been working fine for plenty of hours. As soon as I found out it was working fine, I just stuck that heatsink on there and left it. Uh, yeah, so I'm quite pleased with that. I'm going to throw the back cover on it and uh, get it back to my mate's place tomorrow sometime. I still want to run it for another four or five hours just to be sure but overall I'm quite pleased with it uh, yeah plasmas aren't too hard to work on as long as you know a decent have a decent troubleshooting regime like if it's not powering on just rule out the sustain boards shutting it down then go after the power supply or at least make sure you got your 5 volt standby and everything working fine yeah you just got to be really safe really smart about how you work with them they do run higher voltages than normal 190 volts dc some go up to 205 um, and some of these heat sinks are actually hot with respect to ground see the high voltage symbol next to that one that heat sink will probably be floating at line voltage so don't be tempted just to touch it and do a temperature test not a smart idea <laughs> this uh, samsung plasma actually had a caved in back cover when I found it and it was pushing on this heatsink here as soon as I plugged it into the wall it blew the crap out of my 8 amp te um, so testing breaker destroyed the breaker and tripped a 16 amp breaker on the house as soon as I take the back cover off it goes into its normal fault, fault mode telling me that the uh, X main is dead yeah 
it's actually live with respect to ground. So yeah, be very careful with plasmas. They are fragile. You can break the glass panel very easily if you shake them or twist them the wrong way. And all of this componentry carries a dangerous, if not deadly, charge. And it's DC too, so it won't throw you off like AC often does. It'll just sit there and cook you, um, provided the power supply doesn't go out and overload or something, which would be a godsend. But this is low voltage, like. I'm happy touching this side of it because it's no more than 12 volts. Don't touch anything else. <laughs> They're just, yeah, if you're going to play with a plasma at home, just treat them with respect because, yeah, they're not high voltage technically. It's not over like 800 or 1000 volts, but it's high enough that it will hurt you. It will hurt you bad if you touch it the wrong way. It's the one thing that sort of sets LCDs apart as far as uh, serviceability. It's not just the complexity, but there's pretty high than normal voltages across a lot of parts. And LCD backlights will bite you too, don't worry. They'll bite you pretty hard, especially if they're a big one. But plasmas, yeah. Just be careful if you do try and troubleshoot yours at home. I know I make it look... Well, I don't make it look easy. I'm actually a bit of a novice, but to be honest, yeah, if you're not comfortable or competent working around dangerous voltages turn it off make sure that it's been off for a while before you pull the power supply out because the cap the big caps do hold charge for a while like wait 20 30 minutes before you pull it off um, and then start actually uh, disconnecting things like going through the regime of disconnect x sustain turn it on if it stays on standby and tries to run maybe your x is bad uh, if it does doesn't come on then uh, maybe your Y sustains bad. There are certain ways of troubleshooting them but yeah you gotta be very careful. Treat them with respect. CRTs will bite you too. 25 kV, 30 kV off the CRT is not fun. I've been belted once before by one which was on and once before by one which had been off for about five minutes and it's not fun. <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting experience. But these yeah be careful with plasmas. So yeah, it's working fine. Big thanks to my mate Braden from up in uh, northern Queensland. I think it was uh, Rockhampton or somewhere nearby. At least Rockhampton Post Office. Um, yeah, sent me these boards and the, power, the uh, digital board works just fine. The power supply is quite happy now. All the voltage rails are fine. The caps tested fine. I'll button the back cover up and uh, give it back to my mate. I'll just charge him for labour. And that'll do it. Thanks for watching.